quarries along the river there. Well, they hit a spring and the quarry filled up. And so they left the project. Well, then, like, you know, 50 years later, someone was like, hey, why don't we turn that flooded quarry into a public pool? And so, like, our public pool was a flooded quarry um, that had rebuilt Chicago. So it's pretty cool. But the reason we're talking about the quarry is because Max Headroom came there. Like, they had the Coke 2 van come to the quarry pool. And they set up this big screen and gave away Coke 2. You could win T-shirts. I don't want to, like, to invent a story, but I might have even won one of the T-shirts there. Because I had a Max Hedgen T-shirt that I wore, like, all that summer of, like, 85, 86. I think I remember <laughs> seeing that. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> M M M M Max Headroom. That's right. That it was on TVs like on Wednesday night. And the yeah. reason he was called Max Headroom was because there was a reporter named Edison Carter. And he was like fleeing from some killers because he had a videotape to expose the network as having been taking television into the minds of people and like killing them. Like literally like executing people through television waves. And he had the footage and the proof, and he's trying to flee from, you know, their operatives. And the last thing he sees is a sign that says Max Headroom, like Maximum Headroom. Headroom, yeah. Yeah, man, and that's right. Boom! He, like, dies, and they save his consciousness, and his name is Max Headroom. But it's yeah, Edison it's, Carter. It's like, a, it's like a British sign in, like, a parking garage that says Max Headroom, like, yeah, you know, three meters or something, you know. Right. Yeah. But I love Max. And then the other thing, I mean, we weren't just River Boys. We were Chicago Boys. And Chicago, um, they have WTTW. Mm. Um, Window to the world. That's right. And, uh, like, they would run Doctor Who on the weekends. Well, these mm -hmm. television hackers, like, there haven't been many like successful television hackers oh, you're but gonna, they you're hacked gonna, you're the you're gonna signal. tell the story aren't you i i love this keep going keep going yeah. I've, I've, yes so, so doctor who is broadcasting on wttw and all of a sudden the airwave gets stolen so like you got like pump up the volume with like christian slater like broadcasting pirate radio mm -hmm. you got like a lot mm -hmm. of that underground stuff in the 80s where we all believe that we can like take the signal and like radio free europe and like oh yeah. man that's the <laughs> dream if you could just broadcast for yeah. 20 seconds on their like channel you would be the pirate supreme well they did it and they took over wttw and they put on a max hedrum mask and there wasn't any, like, real manifesto or any, like, message or anything. And I'll bet they wish to this day that they had had one because it lives on in infamy. But, yeah, Max Hedrum took over WTTW. You know, I witnessed that happen when it Amazing. happened. I believe it. And it was one of the... It remains to this day one of the more... Not eerie, but... It, it was a violation because it was scary it was and the, the it was it was not so much what happened because it was mostly just like like he had the mask on and somebody and he was bent over and somebody spanking his ass and shit it was kind of weird like that but it was the tone of it somehow without words without without uh like you said like a platform or a message or anything saying anything the, just pure subversion. Yeah, almost like to an ominous degree where it was just kind of real strange, yeah. like bizarre, like what the fuck is happening here? Because watching it, it felt hijacked. Oh, and yeah. You felt like you were in a hijack with this thing. And I was like probably yeah. like 14 or some shit, 15 yeah. when it happened. And I was home alone, and it was just one of those things. Maybe I had, you know, the first couple of times I ever kind of took a puff or sure. some shit. And it was just weird, and it felt like... You didn't know whether to cheer or hide. Yeah, it was, yes. It just felt like an assault, or it felt like a violation. Yeah. And it was, it, it, it's very clear to me to this day what that was like, watching that, yeah. watching that Max Headroom fucking weird shit happen. 
because we weren't surrounded by frequencies. We didn't like think about media and energy and everything all the time. We weren't checking our phones like all the time. We weren't doing all these things. We lived in a largely peaceable, undisturbed world. So when things like that happened, it was like, really, wait a minute, yeah. is reality not what I think yeah, it is? Jarring and stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like red pilling and shit all of a sudden. You're like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Wait a minute, you can do that? And you can be, <laughs> yeah, and people can fuck with you, and you could probably fuck with them too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, like I said. I've, rem I've told Jesse the story before on this podcast and shit, but it was uh, really jarring, and I never forgot it. And that's, you know, you figure, Jesus, a long time ago, we'll just say that. How about that? In a, in a galaxy yeah. far, far away. But I never forgot yeah. that shit. Yeah, but the 80s, so good. Yeah. I mean, but we, we, get, like, we have a podcast just dedicated to that. It was, it was such a charmed, beautiful life that... The um, the distinctions were very clear. You knew your place very well. Whether you wanted to be there or not, everybody was going to keep you there. You know? <laughs> like an eighties, like an eighties, uh, like a John Hughes movie. Absolutely, it, that was real. And we lived in Chicago, so John Hughes was our life. Like yeah. we didn't we didn't have all these awesome movies that like happen in a place far away. We had these awesome movies that happen in our backyard. Ferris Bueller was our peer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew. Oh, the world needs Matthew Broderick today more than ever. Come on, yeah, everyone. Know, yeah, they did make that commercial a couple years ago that was actually surprisingly satisfying for the fix. Like, they yeah. had that Ferris Bueller TV commercial. It was pretty good. You know, I don't know. He's so New York now. Yeah. Um, it's you just, over, You man. admire him? But, like, I was Over. watching Ferris Bueller just a little while back, and he was always a gentleman. Like, Ferris Bueller is a gentleman. So it's not surprising that he grew up to be a New York elitist. Well, <laughs> he was a largely asexual. But he's with um, Jennifer um, Sex in the City. That's why. Jennifer, yeah. Come on, yeah. man. I don't know. Well, I'm, I don't. I don't really question that aspect for him. Certainly, certainly, very possible. He's very Broadway. He works with. Uh, <laughs> he works with Nathan Clump on Nathan Lane on the producers. Yeah, you know, Jazz which was shit. very successful. Very successful. <laughs> oh, highly so. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But I think by the time he got to, was he? Was he in a Pink Panther remake? Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh no, 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 no. He was... He was Inspector Gadget. Yes. Go, go, yeah. Gadget. I think by the time he got there, we had probably pretty thoroughly jumped the shark. He'd made his mark. He probably had his bread. Life was good. I don't know why he did that, but it made him look stiff and weird, kind of, you know, and just... Yeah. We need math. We need Ferris Bueller again. Today... Yeah. Today, we need Ferris Bueller. Yeah, Ferris wanted... Bueller was kind of the end of... Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Like after that, anything he did didn't compare that I ever saw, it, you know. So he you're, he peaked young and quite early. Yeah. Before that, you have Lady Hawk as well. Lady, yeah, that was yes. pretty good. I like that. Which is very exceptional. Yeah. That was one of my dad's favorite movies. And actually. don't you also right. have Biloxi, <laughs> Biloxi Blues, I think, also? Yes. And he did War Games. Yes, of course. <gasps> War games. Where would we be without Matthew Broderick to tell us yes. that these geniuses always put a back door in and somehow the key is related to their children and yeah. you end up with your dick in the whopper somehow. Yeah. Well, in that one, he changes his grades for the first time. He doesn't do that in Ferris Bueller the first time. He changes his grades in War Games. See, now, I wish Ferris... No, I, maybe I'm proposing something like a mashup. Okay. Ferris, War Games, like Ferris Bueller's War Games, Stay Off, whatever. Where, Amen. <laughs> where he fucking I think we're hacks the computer. Into the potential reality for that. Yeah, I think you should hack the computer at school. 
Matthew Broderick hacks the movies and he like hacks it with all his own IP and creates like this ultimate Matthew Broderick movie. He, I love it. And he doxes everyone and exposes their secret shames. <laughs> it makes them their all pay the shit. price. He punishes all for their improprieties. <laughs> and but he has ring, to, ring, yeah. ring. Yeah. Is that Matthew calling? Yeah. But he has. <laughs> hey Matthew. Yeah. He's Matthew, like, I know what Matthew you've game? done. Son of a bitch, I know what you've done. But he has to be wearing the jacket and everything, and he has to be cool. Like, come up with creative, like, really flippant ways of telling you to fuck off and shit. Like he did. It was, you know, it has to be crafted. It will be a success because we'll we'll have a modern, like, version of boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. yeah. It'll be like the 2000, like, boom, 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 boom. And it will have him run in and everything. It'll be great. But it'll, it'll have like a pitch shift around the voice. Yeah, because you, know? you don't want to offend anybody with low voices. And <laughs> it kind of has a sexy kind of overtone to it. And you're not quite sure what's being implied there. So I think that really should be through committee and workshop until, you know, a mutually satisfying there you go. replacement. Sounds for like it's going to be right for, to Netflix. For, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll be bum, bum, bum. Oh, maybe if you feel like it, and it's a good day for you, man, but I don't want to really, sh you know, shit on your vibe, so, you know, when you get back to me, <laughs> let me know, and we'll try to hook up, and, but, you know, we'll remain socially distanced and everything, but we'll try to right. be righteous about it. A boom, boom, good. boom, and then do it again. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about, like, distancing and stuff, and Not social ahead. distancing, and the yes. times we've been living through. Sure, sure, I mean, sure. You know? Oh yes, very, it's, very it's, much a part of what we've great. been experiencing now. Yes. Yeah. Have you Have you guys been bold enough to talk about our last year in your podcast with the distancing and the viruses and all oh. that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, bum bum yeah. bum. <laughs> Wee! Oh yeah, oh, bum yeah. bum bum. <laughs> Maybe a time or two. So only for the only for the brave, go back to the. Trudge through right. the, the 129 previous episodes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Some of them were just like we were talk. We've talked about like I, I think I was telling you before. We've talked about we, originally the first handful were like talking about music, talking about how we kind of came to love music and how it's kind of impacted our life and kind of guided it and all that stuff and always been a part of it somewhere. And uh, talk about George. We talked about George, and we talked about certain albums that we liked, and then we'd talk about George a little more, and, uh, yeah, you know, and then we talked about Juxtapose, and we talked about our other band, FIH, and my God, everything, but then, at a certain point, we kind of, we kind of broadened our scope a little bit, and started talking about some politics and some social stuff we noticed, and as, as things were progressing into the COVID thing, and the lockdowns, and all the restrictions, you know, we kind of touch we touch uh, on certain milestones along the way in regards to that, and um, yeah, we put our own personal spins on what we think is is occurring, and you know, yeah. the powers that be, and it has occurred. All the conspiracies, oh. and yeah, okay. and, then, and then it just got downright. We just cut into it like a knife. <laughs> it was a, yeah. We like we like to try and make a lot each, of fun for we, us. We yeah. like to try and make each other laugh about all this stuff, because you know, at a certain point, at least for me, this is like this feels like therapy to me, you know, in a, in a life that uh, you know certainly has its you know lefts and rights and ups and downs and stresses and strifes and shit. And I don't know, I don't know, therapy for me may or may not work that great, but what I do know is that <laughs> this podcast has let off so much steam for me it's given me so many belly laughs and shit along the way because it's just like i said it's like a no holds barred thing it's very south it's kind of like south park in a way like everybody's everybody and everything is up to get the piss taken out of it because it's just sometimes it's the a good way to feel like you have some sort of grasp on things in an otherwise kind of wild world yeah, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, you yeah. want to go that route, or you want to go back to George? 
Oh, we can go anywhere we want, you know. I mean, we've certainly...